Shami, I'm 23 and I'm considering a Brazilian butt lift. Brazilian butt lift, apparently pioneered in Brazil by Dr. Ivo Pitingi, and now the procedures practiced all over the world. And I've heard it's the world's deadliest cosmetic procedure with one in 3,000 operations ending in death. In recent months, British women have added to this number. But body image has always been something I've really struggled with. The worst comment I've ever had was your personality, but it's Steph London's body. And it's like, why would you say that to me? The BBL is building a bad reputation. These women just look like freaking carcasses on the table, like just boom, like leg, thigh. I want to find out more before going under the knife and talk about the pressures black women face to be curvy. You take this risk for for the fashion, I can explain it and I can support it. My family back home will probably be thinking, why would you put yourself under the knife? Are you crazy? You could lose your life. But usually in the African culture, it's always like, no, the bigger, the better, or the curvier, the better. So I work in marketing, I work for a few charities, hair companies, and I also mentor, as well as having my lash business. Anything else? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I've been struggling with my weight loss since about college. I sort of tried to set a goal, so if it's not for like a birthday, it's a holiday. I went to Barbados and I actually managed to like drop a bit of weight, but then you come back and you're like, okay, there's nothing to really look forward to. So you sort of just lose yourself a bit. Now, I'm just thinking, let me just consider a BBL and uh, maybe things wouldn't be so tough. I'm intrigued to find out the different types of surgeons, other women's experiences in terms of actually getting to that point where they're considering a BBL and just the emotional process behind it. The surgery Shami wants is a two-step process. Step one, she'd have to have liposuction to remove fat from unwanted areas like the stomach, back and thighs. Step two, vast amounts of this fat is injected into the bum to give the desired fuller, perkier and rounder effect. I follow a lot of influencers people like Nella Rose, Aaliyah J, and Mary Musa. She shares her experience with cosmetic surgery and has openly spoken about the pressures to fit into a certain mold as a black influencer. It's something I can really relate to. You've got like lots of followers, like what, 500K? Yeah, about 526. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How exactly do you feel like your audience or like, you know, your followers, how do they perceive the news? I had my breasts in line. Yeah. So after that, I had like a long time of not doing anything. It was just my breasts I wanted. Yeah. And then I went into non-surgical, which is more my face. I got turned like, don't worry, you want to be white. So it was always seen as a thing like black dolls don't yeah, need don't, to or yeah. shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. We have this thing where it's glorified that we we don't, like, black don't crack. We don't really aid it quick. Like, majority have good skin. I think why it's so a taboo and why it's so hard for us to, like, swallow when, like, black women or anyone wants to get cosmetic surgery, non-surgical surgical, just because it's, like, we're ruining something that we already have. I'm currently considering a BBL, which is a Brazilian butt lift. Is this something that you've ever contemplated before, or...? I've got to the stage where I've actually had it ready, like, knowing what dates I was going. I wanted to get my bum down. I was like, look at all these Instagram girls are doing well, working with these brands, like showing off their body. As a black influencer, there's like a certain look, and I think a certain look is you have to be a figure eight, like a curvy, yeah. big boobs, big bum, to be considered as a woman, yeah. as a black woman. It is to get likes, it is to get all things like that, because that's your job at the end yeah. of the day, you want your engagement to be high. Why didn't you do it? Did you think it'll obviously affect them, yeah. or like, yeah? I got to a stage where like, I felt like I was doing something more on my social media for young people. I just thought, embrace what I have, I'd rather just, that's, yeah, that's yeah. it really, yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming today. Yeah, thanks for meeting me. Thank you. Mm. How much nicer is this going <laughs> <there? laughs> Today was really insightful. I obviously met Mariam. You more or less think that once you have one procedure, you sort of want to carry on. But the fact that she's obviously left it, it's not on the cards for now anyway, because she's an influencer and she has a lot of young people depending on her, she's more or less the representation that they're looking for. Mariam gave me a lot to think about, but our lives are so different. 
I wanted to discuss getting a BBL with my good friend Liv. I've been considering a BBL for a while, and mm -hmm. obviously we've spoken about it before from like university yeah. and stuff. But I just sort of wanted to get like your opinion on like how you feel about it all. It's different when you're actually talking to your friend this is about it. doing it. Yeah. I stand by the same thing I've always yeah. said. People have got the rights to do whatever they want to do yeah. with their with their body. My thing is, it's still reasoning. Why? It. Why, it's girl? <laughs> Why? Um, it's a few things. So. Just down to like what I do in my day to day life, yeah. social media, my job, you know, like different shoots that I go to, people I interact with, and just like what I see. If you didn't like follow anyone on Instagram, so you didn't even have Instagram yeah. or like Snapchat or any kind of social media, do you think you'd still like want to even think about getting something like the BBR done? Wow. No one's actually ever asked me that question. Um, I'll probably say no, because I'm the only child. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So my representation is my mum, and she's very, like, petite and stuff. Oh, my gosh, yes, your mum yes, is snatched. Exactly. I go on social media. Oh, my gosh, this is amazing. You know, and that's where the influence comes from. I totally understand where you're coming from, yeah. especially because it's, like, in our faces. Of course. Like, I go onto Instagram. It's, it's like my newspaper. Like, yeah. I, I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I'm on is Insta. Yeah. So I get it. Like, you're seeing things that can make you feel down and stuff like that. But then, you know, you're standing outside in the queue to get something that everybody's been promoting. And that's what I do like about the influencers. A lot of yeah. them are just like, boom, this, this is, is what it. I did. Yeah. This is where I got it. Use my discount code. <laughs> 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 you know? Like, seriously. Can you imagine? SJ is one of these influencers. I'm SJ, Shani Jamila. She's been there, bought the T-shirt and tagged a surgeon in the post. She travelled to Turkey for her Brazilian butt lift this year, where a British woman near Cambridge died after undergoing the procedure, so I had a lot of questions to ask her. Does it slightly upset you that people affiliate your inspiration with people like Kim K or...? It literally grinds my yeah. gears. Yeah. Yes, she looks good. Yes, she has a figure similar to what I went to get done. However, that's not the reason. Her inspiration draws from black women also. Like, she's she only been in my life a few years. My mum's been in my life since birth. So, I mean, I'm considering BBL <laughs> for a while. I just wanted you to sort of, like, explain how you got to that point and, um, you know, just your whole process in general. Yeah. So, I'm from the West Indies. Yeah. And as a lot of people know, the West, in, like, West Indians yeah. were curvaceous people. Yeah. So, like, my mum and my aunties are all, like, these yeah, voluptuous yeah, yeah, yeah. women. <laughs> I'm looking at these curves like, oh, yeah. my God, like, you guys are heavenly. Yeah. But it came to that, like, pre... Just, like, few that age, like, maybe 18. Mm -hmm. And I realised, and I was like, babe, your hips mm -hmm. are not coming in mm -hmm. any time soon. Yeah. Like, the, your hips are going to come in after you have a baby. Are you even going to be able to enjoy it? Yeah. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. And then I was like, no, I want to I wanna do this. Have you ever had it sort of in the back of your mind that potentially this could terribly go wrong? Yeah, like, death is a real thing. Yeah. Death um, is definitely a real thing. Um, but saying that, I think after the, the initial researching, death became... Like, I wasn't really thinking about it. It wasn't really something that I was like... <gasps> Because after I've researched, I've done more research, I've done more research and I've prayed and I'm making sure my, my health is paramount, I'm making sure my blood count's high, I'm making sure my vitamin D, like, literally, even down to vitamins, mm. I was making sure that everything was perfect. So this is where I'm going to get, like, the fat grafted to in the red areas and the green areas is where they're sucking the fat from. Um, and I've got around 40 minutes to an hour until I um, have my surgery. I And then next thing you know, I woke up and I had a new booty and a new new hips and it was amazing. <laughs> amazing. So how would you explain, like, you know, your emotional state and obviously after getting the procedure, how that was? Because obviously that's one thing that I fear, that the pain is obviously going to be a bit more, yeah. you know, intense. It's painful. Yeah. I can't, I'm not going to, like, butter it up. It is painful. Um, and then, like, by the fifth day, I was running around the place like usual. How long is your healing process? My healing, well, the general healing process mm -hmm. for a BBL is like six months until you see your, your final, final, final form. But 
the mark that I'm at right now, I'm like, if this is my sick one body, I'm yeah, fine with it. Yeah. Like, it's okay. I feel like just for your own peace of mind, research is key. Yeah. Key, key, key. I would love to thank you so, so, so much for giving us an insight. <laughs> Meeting SJ really got me thinking. Patients like her clearly take the risk with the surgery, but I've started to question if doctors felt the same pressure too. One doctor who's not convinced it's a risk worth taking is Dr. Oroma Ukelege. I'm 26 years old. I'm a medical and cosmetic doctor, and I can pretty much fill most places in the face. <laughs> Chin, jawline, nose to mouth lines, marionette lines, lips, nose, cheeks, cheekbones. So in terms of the people that come and see me, it's pretty much 98% women. My black clients say to me that they've come to see me because I'm black and therefore I get them. Not even, oh my God, you're a medical doctor or anything like that. It's like, you're black, you look like me, therefore you understand my struggles. There's almost this sense of, you know, injectables are purely for the Caucasian community and not for us. And if for whatever reason we are considering injectables, it means that we're not proud of ourselves or we're not self-confident. There's a lot of secrecy surrounding aesthetic treatments in like the black and mixed communities. You know, people are reluctant to even say where they get their hair done. I've definitely toyed with the idea of offering a type of uh, butt enhancement. Um, so you can get injectables that stimulate collagen within that area. Obviously, from a financial business point of view, it could be really good. Um, but again, on the flip side, I felt as though, Iwoma, if you start offering this, what message are you sending out? Especially as a black woman, I almost feel responsible for, for having that stance. Occasionally, I'm just kind of looking at these Instagram profiles um, of these clinics. You see these images of ladies, pretty much everything exposed. These women just look like frigging carcasses on the table, like, just boom, like, leg, thigh. It's almost a trend where black women are almost becoming like a modern day caricature of themselves. I'd heard from a doctor who doesn't offer butt enhancement. It was time to talk to one who did. Dr. Kramer's performed BBR surgeries in the UK and abroad, but he recently turned his back on the procedure. I wanted to know why and get a real breakdown of the risks. I've been looking into the different um, prices for the BBR procedure, some down to like £2,000. £2,000, what you just told me, sounds so inexpensive that I would wonder the credentials, the experience of the surgeon. Be careful. How do you perceive the fact that people are actually going out of the country? It would be really condescending to say, oh, in Turkey, they're not good. That's not true. There will be very good surgeons too. Worldwide, you can go to any country, there will be great surgeons, but you must know who they are. Do you speak Turkish well enough? Probably not. <laughs> Does the doctor speak English well enough to express himself? After picking Dr. Kramer's brains, he assessed if the BBR wanted was even a possibility. There she is, Shami. Do you remember the song? You can leave the hat on. That's what you remind me of. Turn around. I want to see what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you think you want the fat? Aha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. When you stepped out of the bathroom in front of the mirror, I was really surprised you're here for BBL because let me tell you, your buttocks look great. It's really it's full. It looks completely proportionate. And actually, actually, you are a girl mm -hmm. who makes probably a lot of other girls jealous because they come to have the BBL to have exactly what you have. Your problem is more on the side yeah. of the buttocks. There's like a dent, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. So you're right, there's something missing and mm -hmm. you wanna have this filled. You showed me the areas where you wanna take the fat, need to take the fat, there is enough. Don't get me wrong, yeah. I don't mean it like it sounds, yeah, but there's no, no, enough to transfer to your buttocks. But could you just explain further what it actually consists of? Two steps. In the first step, we remove fat. We do an extensive radical liposuction to whatever area it needs to be shaped. Um, and in the second step, we take this fat and we inject it in the areas which want to be enhanced um, in the buttock. Could you explain the risk? A lot of patients think it's a quick procedure, it's harmless, but we shouldn't forget that one in 3,000 procedures ends deadly.
So this is basically the highest death uh, complication risk in any cosmetic surgery by far. Tell me what you shouldn't forget is that a BBL is a so-called blind procedure. I have the risk that I could injure a vessel and I pump milliliters and milliliters in this vessel and I cause a fat emboli. A fat embolus will hit the lung or the heart and you die within seconds of a lung emboli or a heart attack. I, for myself, decided uh, not to inject into the muscle anymore. So you will have to sign this risk of death. It's fashionable. In my, a few years, it might not be fashionable anymore. And to risk your life uh, for that, I don't understand it. I'm not ridiculing you as a patient. I say, oh, that's a fashion. For you, it's not a fashion. It's how you define yourself as a black woman. So I totally get that. However, we, we, we should not forget this tremendous risk of life and death. We see YouTube videos, um, vloggers, influencers talking about the experience, but no one actually explains it into depth the way you have. And, you know, you've really given me an insight into, well, the truth. I think you look really cool. Um, and it, w it would be wrong thing to, to take this risk, okay? Give me a hug. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>